All right, so hello everyone, and today I'm going to uh, have a presentation about uh, the Elixir and Phoenix application, and uh, let me share my screen basically. All right, uh, so at this point you should uh, see the presentation. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, Elixir, of course. This is the second presentation uh, about the Elixir. And let's dive in. Uh, before everything else, who am I? I'm the uh, software engineer at SoftServe. And I'm really passionate about uh, Elixir and the Phoenix, and, which is great. However, I have, again, confession. Uh, confession about that uh, I'm still a Jon Snow in Elixir, I'm still learning the ropes, but I'm interested in all the details about Elixir and the Phoenix uh, framework particularly, and of course I would like to share my experience of learning the Elixir and Phoenix, uh, basically in the production also. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, results from Elixir users survey. It was created by Josh Adams, and we're going to, to cover some key questions and answers in this survey. Uh, we're going to talk uh, a little bit uh, bigger picture of deploying Phoenix application on Heroku, and later on I'm going to show you the demonstration the live demo of uh, deploying application to the Heroku uh, cloud. Also, we are going to uh, see the future goals for the presentations, which is actually something excited. And probably uh, later on you can give me some suggestion about the, um, what topics you would like me to cover in the next presentation about Elixir and Phoenix. And, of course, the Q&A session questions. So, Jump into Elixir Users Survey 2016, we need to talk about the author. So the author of this um, survey is a really awesome guy. Uh, his name is Josh Arms, and he is the CTO of the Daily Trip, uh, but uh, also he is the creator and an active maintainer of the Firestorm. Firestorm is the open source forum engine built with love and passion using Elixir and Phoenix on the back end, and of course the LM front end framework. So uh, this is a really great opportunity for newcomers to learn about uh, Elixir Phoenix uh, using this Firestorm. It's completely open source, so I suggest you to take a look at this project. Uh, so let's think about uh, what kind of questions we would like to expect from this survey. And uh, this survey is... Uh, um, the results of Q&A sessions, and it was held for 2016. I hope we'll have the same for 2017. Uh, however, it was not started yet at the time of this presentation. And the link down below, you can uh, visit and actually see the results of this survey. It was held among the users, current users of Elixir, and of course Erlang developers, because as you know, Elixir is built on top of the Erlang virtual machine. So it was mentioning that uh, since years, so it was first held it in 2014, uh, and it was less uh, responders for this survey. Then 2015, it was much more uh, of the responders, and uh, the latest version in 2016, it was uh, more than 1,000 of responders, which is really great because we can see the perspective of how people are getting interested in the Elixir community and Phoenix uh, particularly. So, as you can uh, recall uh, from my previous presentation, uh, Elixir as the programming language, it was created in back in 2012. And later on, uh, Chris McCord created the Phoenix framework, which is a web framework built on top of the Elixir. And it was only dated 2015, so it is uh, almost two years already passed, but the number of people are interested in Phoenix framework is rising. And it's really great because uh, we are currently in the process of developing the uh, ecosystem for Elixir and the Phoenix. And all right, we can uh, see 
uh, some questions that were asked for the old responders and the answers uh, actually visualized in the graphics. So the first question, uh, what was your primary language before getting interested in Elixir? And we see that the majority of Elixir users moved over from the Ruby. Uh, however, there is a strong showing from numbers of other languages and etc. It can be uh, JavaScript, Python, Java, PHP, C Sharp, C++, and so on. So, for example, we have also responders who are coming from the Go language and the Perl, Rust, which is also popular languages nowadays. And uh, also there was a question, uh, which packages and frameworks uh, are you using? And most of the responders, actually the majority again, are uh, voting for the Phoenix. And this is actually natural, because the Phoenix is the Ryzen um, web framework written on the Phoenix, and which is really popular. And you might think about this as the uh, Rails on the Ruby, so the Phoenix is on Elixir. Uh, also, Acta. Acta is the database wrapper and language integrated query for Elixir. And it's also available as well as the Phoenix as the package on the package management tool, which is called the Hex. It is particularly created for uh, Elixir and Erlang developers. Also, uh, we have others, and I assume that these were the responders coming from the Erlang or even the Erlang developers. And they also uh, Use some packages, but it was mentioned like others. Uh, the last package uh, in this chart is the NERVS. And NERVS is a really great package, and NERVS is used to craft and deploy the bulletproof embedded software for Elixir, which is really popular among the Elixir um, uh, community. Also, we can see the mapping of the use of this Phoenix and Actor to the, another question. Uh, in what environment are you using Elixir? And most of responders using uh, Elixir as the um, web app uh, development, using the Phoenix web framework. Also, they use Embedded, and I assume uh, for Embedded, it is really great to use this NERVS package, which is uh, really a bulletproof embedded software for Elixir. And you should go and try it, actually. There are some examples in the official uh, NERVS uh, project over the internet. It's also open source, so it's, you can freely go, download, even clone this fork and start using it. Also, others, I assume that this is something that was um, about the Erlang developers voted for. So, again, uh, there are a number of the use of the Elixir nowadays. And this is amazing because 95% of Elixir users use Phoenix, but this question's answer showed that nearly 25 of the community is doing something non-web as well. And you may consider doing with Elixir, for example, APIs. You can also build automated share trading backends, uh, bots, uh, some CLI commons and tools, daemons, databases, desktop, games, and etc. So the use is pretty much limitless, and it's only limited by your ideas. So Elixir is uh, very useful. As the same as the Ruby in their young ages, it was also used for automation, games development, general TCP IP servers. So you see the same use of the Elixir. So it goes with the same, uh, same uh, uh, idea as the Ruby. All right, so the next question that was asked also in this survey is how you are deploying your Elixir apps. And actually, this is the question that leads to this presentation, because today I'm going to talk uh, more about deploying Elixir apps. Uh, and of course, uh, the majority uh, vote for releases and push to servers uh, some ad hoc way. So actually, releases came from the Erlang community. This is the uh, typically normal way how you're going to release your Elixir application. Also, uh, the second place goes to Docker deployment. Uh, the third for Heroku. Uh, there is a tool called eDeliver, uh, and it is built on top of the distillery uh, package, which is commonly used for deployment of Elixir and Erlang applications. Also, we can see that some of the developers use Ansible uh, together with the releases uh, idea and some other tools. By other tools, I assume uh, some custom bash and uh, scripts that SSH to your production environment are used here. But today, we're going to uh, specifically talk about uh, what 
actually ideas we get from this chat. And first of all, we as the community should find a way to expose new users to releases earlier in their Elixir experience. And the second, which is more important, we need more examples that clarify the simplicity and the value of Erlang's distribution. And today we are going to focus on the Heroku deployment. So I'm trying to reveal, and uh, together we're going to, uh, all to, through all this process, of how you can deploy your Elixir application. And it uh, completely fine matches with uh, uh, my ideas and future goals from the previous presentation. So one of the ideas, among others, was deploying Elixir with Heroku. So I believe that today we can uh, cover this gap and actually uh, can cross out this idea and say that we complete this uh, milestone. So deploying Elixir with Heroku. Let's dive in. Uh, before we start to deploy some application, we need to have some application, of course. And I'm not going to uh, start from the scratch just to save our time, but I'm going to take uh, the application that was created during our previous application, a pre previous uh, presentation about the Elixir, and this is a Phoenix mailer. This is an open source web app which used the Elixir and Phoenix on the backend, and of course the packages XQ MLGAN integration for delivering mails and delivered them in the queued job. So I'm going to clone this repo, it's available again on the GitHub, and I'm going to switch to my terminal and git clone this repository. So let's clone it, all right. Let's also dive to this uh, folder. And you see, I have the fully functional uh, Elixir application here. So let me uh, run uh, the dependencies to get to fetch all the dependencies for this application. And we are ready to start it. So I'm going to use this familiar uh, command, which is uh, mix and phoenix uh, server, which will start the server. Actually, it tries to compile first. And then it will start the server on the localhost port 4000. So let's uh, be patient, wait for a couple of seconds. Uh, bear with me, it will be short. All right. All right. So it, it uh, tells me about uh, the absence of the uh, branch, but actually I'm not using branch quite heavily in this application, so we can go without the branch installation. Branch here in the, uh, by default in a Phoenix application is used for the asset pipeline, but it can be actually substituted with uh, Webpack, for example, or Webpack second version. So let me open right now this uh, location. So. And here we have the, our Elixir Phoenix application. And just to remind you, uh, I'm going to send actually, um, you see the uh, style sheet is broken, so probably I still need to run npm install. Let me just uh, execute this quickly. Uh, yeah, let's see what we have. Uh, Note env. Local and let's choose the long-term support version. And let's see. Okay, so we are ready to install the all the packages. npm install should work fine. It will install all the dependencies uh, required for the branch to work properly. So we don't. Uh, we will see the better formatting here in this uh, local development. Let's just uh, wait a couple of seconds. All right, so now we are ready to go and let's uh, restart our application. Start it from the scratch. All right, now it doesn't complain about the branch uh, dependencies. Let's open it one more time. All right, so we have this nice utilization and we're ready to send email. So just to recall from the previous presentation, uh, this email allows me to send uh, email notifications from my uh, non-working email to my working email. So let's try it out. Let's test email and the body can be random. So hi there. And let's submit it. 
So it uh, says like the message was successfully submitted, and shortly it will be available in my uh, inbox of the Microsoft Outlook. So meanwhile, it's sending. Let's uh, remind ourselves the structure of this application. So we have the controller, of course. All right. So it was uh, it was here, right? So we got the test email uh, we, from my non-working. Uh, uh, email address to my working address with uh, some uh, body hi there. So it's it's uh, uh, expected. All right, so let's uh, inspect the, some of the logic. So basically, it is pretty straightforward. So when I push the um, send button, I create a new email, and I use the XQ to put it in the queue and deliver this uh, job. Uh, in three seconds, of course, and this job is processed by the XQ. You can think about the XQ as the um, sidekick or Redis for the Ruby on Rails. So it follows the same idea. So let me just open uh, this send email worker, and you see I have the same perform function that you would expect from the sidekick. And it tries to send the contact email, and then in the console it prints uh, some message, and we can, of course, see it was printed here. So, uh, yeah, so that is the message. Uh, all right, so this is about the development, and this is application we're going to deploy on Heroku. Uh, all right, that's, uh, that's already great. So let's stop this, and actually what I'm going to do right now, uh, I'm going to, I need to install, first of all, the Heroku uh, CLI toolpad uh, to be able to integrate and deploy my application in the cloud for the Heroku appliance. I have already prepared uh, my personal uh, Heroku account, and I have uh, three uh, applications here. Let's create a new one for this particular uh, application on the Phoenix, for the Phoenix Mailer. Uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, use brew to install the Heroku toolpad. So brew install and Heroku and the brew and Heroku. Bear with me, this is uh, an actual name of the package. But uh, I, I do not want to do it because I have already installed it. When you install it from the scratch, you have to install it first on the Mac. There are also instructions on the Heroku how you can install it on the Windows and of course on the Linux. Uh, yeah, so basically we have the application. Let's create a new application that will associate with the uh, Heroku. So the command is Heroku create, and we need to uh, initialize it with the build pack. And this is how the application will know that we are going to deliver the uh, Elixir application. So let's execute this command. It creates the uh, application. It gives us some nice uh, URI of the application on the Heroku. And let me open just right now my personal dashboard. All right. And you see this application, Calm Harbor. Wow, like a pretty interesting name. Uh, so this is this application on the Heroku. Right now, it's not configured. So let's uh, create some configuration for it. Uh, first of all, I, of course, would like to have another uh, build pack added to this application. And this is a build pack that is uh, used to uh, compile the static assets. As you can see, we have uh, this branch problem. So to, uh, li to actually compile the assets, static assets for our application, we have to use this Heroku build pack Phoenix static uh, build pack. So I'm going to add it also by this command to my Heroku application. It was successfully added. We can also verify that it was successfully added on the, um, on the actually, uh, let me just uh, get it. Yeah, so here on the Heroku application settings, so here you have the build packs that we associate with our application. This is a Heroku build pack Elixir and the Heroku build pack Phoenix static uh, build pack. All right. Uh, we also need uh, the Atom, because we're using the Postgres in this application, to create some uh, connection between our application and the Postgres. So uh, the command for, for adding the Atom for the Postgres is uh, follow, as follows. So we create the Atom, 
and this atom is has some specific name, and it is uh, you. It is named by Hiroku, Postgres, here, and uh, the name of the package which is free to use without any uh, mean of charge. So it's a free uh, use with uh, no extra charge from your credit card on Hiroku. It is used the hobby dev. Let's uh, add this atom. So it will be processed by the Heroku, and what it gives us in return, it creates a database URL a system environment on Heroku that we are going to use later on in application configuration. We can also see this uh, on the Resources tab, and you see we have already successfully added Heroku Postgres database, right? So it is all the information about the database. I will just leave it here for now. We are going to come back here later on for the references. And also in the settings, I would like to reveal the configuration. And you see, automatically there was added the system variable database URL. All right. Uh, so far, so good. Let's move on. Uh, let's uh, also uh, add some configuration to config our uh, pool size for the connections of this uh, Postgres. Uh, so, pool size is equal to 10. It will be set as the uh, system variable configuration on the Heroku. So, it is set. It. Why, why 10? Okay, so basically we have uh, some uh, limit of the free account for this Postgres uh, hobby dev plan. So, as you see, we can utilize, uh, uh, right now we utilize zero out of uh, 20 connections, so we need to specify the pool size uh, less than or equal to this uh, maximum value. So I, I specify right now the value of 10, which is uh, absolutely fine for me. And of course, uh, we need to warm our um, application with the XQ that is used to process the delayed job, and actually it is capable of sending the emails. And we need to install the add-on for that, of course. And the add-on for that is used the Redis. So Redis is used in our application as the uh, uh, p-value storage to keep our uh, queues of the jobs in sync and actually to keep the syncing and scheduled job in the sync so that later on we can access them. So let's uh, add also this uh, add-on. So the command it goes right here and the Heroku, uh, again the name is Heroku Redis and the um, free plan that you can use uh, free of charge is the hobby dev. Alright? It is added, successfully added, so far so good. Um, all right, next we are going to need to generate our application secret. And it can be done really easily using the uh, imperative behavior mix phoenix gen secret. We are going to generate the secret key for our application. And of course we need to supply the secret to our Heroku application. So I'm going to use again Heroku config set and at this point I'm going to create a system variable which is uh, named as secret key base and I'm going to set this to this value that we generated. All right? Okay, it was set it to this value and uh, we can also verify that it was set it correctly, of course. So uh, update this uh, settings page and revealing the config wars. We can see we have database, pool size, Redis URL, which was already supplied uh, by this uh, atom for the Redis, and the secret key base is here. All right. So far, so good. And now we have to supply some, more, uh, some additional configurations to run our application in production. And the uh, right file for this is the config prod x and what I'm going to add here is the configuration for our Postgres database and uh, but before that let's modify uh, the config URL so we're going to use uh, another scheme which is not HTTP but HTTPS because we we can do it 
and it's awesome. It's provided by Heroku. So the scheme will be HTTPS. Of course, we need to uh, um, adjust our host name, and let's use the host name that was provided by uh, the Heroku. So I'm going to open up right now. It's uh, nothing here in this app, but I'm going to copy and paste this provided uh, URI, and of course adjust the port, which will be the four four three. Uh, all right. Also, the secret uh, key base, we're going to paste it here, and I'm going to read it use, uh, from the environment variable, which I have set previously, and it will be the system get env and secret uh, key base environment variable, all right? Um, yeah, I think that this is it for this configuration, and as I said before, let's add some configuration for our application uh, for the repository, and we're going to use the Postgres. So, uh, let's add this teacher and the repo, and adapter, we're going to use, of course, actor, and adapter will be for the Postgres. So it will be adapters and the Postgres. Uh, the URL, again, will be read from the system variable. Uh, and uh, if you recall, we have already got this uh, database URL here in this uh, system variable, database URL. So we're going to use it right now. System get env. And let's read this value here. All right. And the pool size, of course. Let's uh, configure the pool size. So the pool size is uh, something that we're also going to read from the system variable on the Heroku. Uh, but we need to translate it to the integer. I'm sorry, this type of integer. And again, we're going to take it from here. Just not to be binded to our development or some custom settings, we're going to use the system variables, which is really handy. And of course, we don't want to break anything, so if it was not succeeded to read it, we are going to default it to 10. And we're going to force the SSL. So, yeah. Uh, that's it for the configuration of the um, our repo for Postgres. That's, uh, uh, safe and cute from that. Um, oh, yeah, so one thing that I have uh, forgot is that we have this uh, URL, which is import config, broad secrets, but since we don't have anything, we are importing the secret key from uh, our system variable. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. All right, so one uh, last uh, tweak that we need to do is about our WebSocket, and for WebSocket, we uh, use actually, let me just check it, uh, the channels, and we use the channels, which is direct mapping to the WebSocket in the Phoenix application, and I'm going to add one little tweak uh, just to be in sync with the timeout provided by the writers, so I'm going to send the timeout for the WebSocket to 45 uh, seconds. All right? So... Uh, this one, and so far so good. Uh, now we are ready to finally create our own proc file, which will run the instance on the Heroku, and it turns out that it will run our application. So the proc file uh, will have only one line, and it is really a simple configuration. So we have a web instance on the Heroku. And to run our application in production, we have to supply this mix and global variable and set it to prod. And as usual, run our uh, application. Simple as that. Isn't this simple? Like I think that this is the most convenient way to uh, supply the configuration. So let's save it. All right. Um, I think that we are ready at this point to push our code to Hero. So let's uh, hit status and let's add all this uh, to actually commit our changes and push it to the Hero and the proc file, of course. And hit status and let's hit commit. So add configure at uh, production uh, config. All right. And uh, 
but while we using the Heroku, it was already modified and add for us a new remote, and we can uh, uh, exa uh, examine it. A new remote which is called Heroku. So this is a remote where we're going to push our changes. So the command is straightforward. Git Heroku, git push Heroku and the code from the master. All right. So let's push it. And goes wide and goes live. All right, you see that we use the Erlang of this specific version and Elixir. Bear with me, we're going to adjust this uh, right uh, shortly, actually, in a few minutes. But it is like some default configuration that are provided by Heroku. So it tries to compile everything. Also, we can notify and observe this process uh, using the Heroku console. So here is uh, view logs, or we can run it from the console. I prefer to view the logs. And it seems like the build was started by me. And right now, it is compiling. So let's uh, wait shortly while it compiles and be ready for us to use. So uh, I would like to remind you that the goal uh, for us is to run our application on the Heroku in the client and actually to be able to send emails from the cloud. So we will be able to send some, uh, to compose some emails and it will be uh, resides in my email box for the working uh, email. Um, we have some compilation errors. Uh, so missing adapters configuration, teacher report. Uh, I think that I have some some problem here. Uh, let's uh, see what it is. Ecto, all right. Uh, I okay. So I think that there is some typo in the production configuration. So let's uh, revisit our configuration for the um, Postgres. So config, all right. So here I have some typo in specifying the name of my application, so it's called a teacher, and let's uh, see if we have everything specified correctly, uh, so system get enough database here, all right, pool size, uh, this is also should be fine, system get enough pool size, and that's is true, all right, let's, uh, let's commit this uh, type of fix, so I'm going to add this, and commit with the typo, fixed. And let's again push uh, Heroku master. It should be uh, more faster because it will uh, already use the compiled servers and assets. So of course this is also available here in the logs. All right. Yeah, there is some uh, some timing. I mean, like it needs to be compiled. But when it's compiled, it will be really fast beam uh, footprint on the Erlang virtual machine. So. We need to compile our uh, project. Okay, so something. Oh. Hmm. The client uh, failed to push some reference. Uh, let's investigate the logs. Uh, there's still some problem here. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Yep. I guess uh, you have the typo in the Postgres word. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll say, okay, so it's nice to have this, uh, to have the audience that knows better than me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, that's, that's a little bit typo because typing it's never was easy for me. <laughs> uh, all right, so post, all right, yeah, thank you. Postgres. Should be fine now. Um, yeah. Sorry for that. Uh, just need to. Again, uh, commit these changes and type uh, fixed. And let's uh, push to Heroku. Uh, 
I'm glad to have this audience because uh, I mean, it's uh, really uh, convenient to have uh, people that watch really closely what I'm doing and actually uh, find the, the spawning place really quickly. So thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, it's uh, again the build was started, and the compilation should go smoothly right now. I believe so. I really hope for that. In the end, we will be rewarded because we will have the um, Heroku application that uh, runs uh, live on the internet on the Heroku in the cloud. So it will be really awesome to see how it works there. I think that uh, we succeeded, and right now uh, we install the node, and right now we're going to install all the uh, dependencies for our branch um, tool. So npm install should work fine. All right. The same in four. Uh, like a little bit less info because we uh, run the logs only for the info on the productions. Mm, but I think that we, if we're going to run the console, we're going to see the same output, uh, basically. But I'm not going to try it out, but bear with me, it was the same. Uh, yeah, so build was succeeded, and we have deployed application. All right, so let's... The, the final... Okay, there is some also problem. But nevertheless... Um, there is the final command that we need to execute on the Heroku, and this is actually to migrate our database, to start our database and with this pool size specified. Uh, let's see if it will fix the problem. So it connecting to the specified port. All right. Okay. So... Um, there is some other problem. Oh, yeah, I know what's the problem. Uh, actually, it notifies me that it doesn't know how to connect to the Redis, because previously I was run Redis on my dev environment, and it was straightforward. But right now, it, there is an add-on, and uh, it, it does, doesn't know about any local host and specified port. So let's figure out uh, what are the settings we have uh, get it from the installation. So we have Redis URL. So we need to get use of this Redis URL in our configuration. Let's tweak for the last time our configuration uh, to go live. So as well as I have already supplied configuration for the Postgres repo, let's config uh, the same way as we have configuration for uh, like the overall configuration uh, for the XQ, right? We have to configure the same way uh, on the production. So let's create some. Uh, this will be a config. Again, the application name is the same. And right now I'm going to... Actually, I don't need it because uh, the XQ is the separate application. Yeah. So I need to create an XQ configuration. And the name for this uh, configuration will be XQ. And the URL actually will be something that I uh, want to read from my uh, global environment. And this will be uh, this Redis URL. And of course, I will specify as well the namespace because it is required by the XQ. And it will be the XQ itself. And concurrency, uh, let's specify 10 uh, simultaneous job for us, and the queue name, as we uh, as we use in our application, we use the queue name email. And this, uh, I think that this is all we have to supply. Yes, I think it's it's fine. Uh, while queue is email, uh, because we use uh, it in the. Uh, our controller. So when we enqueue the job to send the email, we use the email queue. And the delay is three seconds. Okay. 
All right, this is the last chin, chance uh, to <laughs> run our application, I think, with this. No more configuration is required. So let's uh, commit this new change, and this is uh, configure uh, Freddy's X, XQ uh, up. And let's uh, hit push on the Heroku master. I promise you that we are going to configure this. Uh, bear with me, we will. Uh, but right now we need to uh, start our application successfully with this new provided uh, rescue installation. So, overview and view the build progress. And right now it's compiling. Compressing, so synced, right? So where we have uh, uh, capability to watch this live. All right. So I think that it was all right. So it was released and it was deployed, and with no errors. So far, so good. Let's uh, open our application. I'll close this one. Okay. So here we are. We have live on Heroku our application deployed. And let's try to send some emails. The subject, okay, it's a test from Hiroko. And hi there from Hiroko. And let's submit it. It was successfully signed, which is really great. Uh, we are also able to see this uh, XQ uh, dashboard. So, for example, uh, XQ. It will give us the XQ admin, and it should show yeah how many queues it was processed. And you see, we got this live on the internet. So we have this notification uh, to my working email with the test from Heroku. Hi there from Heroku. So let's uh, add one more one more uh, test. And hi, we are live. Okay. Uh, from Heroku. All right, it was successfully sent, and let's wait for it. And also, we can uh, go again to the XQ, and you see that we have two processes right now. So it was already processed. There's some problem with this uh, probably dashboard, but nevertheless, it, it, it was updated, so it says about two processed job in the queue. And Okay, so we are live from Heroku test. Everything goes well. Uh, I promise you that we can adjust uh, the running uh, Erlang and Elixir version. So previously it was uh, saying that we have Erlang 19.3 and Elixir 1.42. Uh, I'm on my machine. I think that I used the uh, last Elixir, right? So the version is 151 and the arrow. Uh, Erla, uh, I'm sorry, L version, so it's uh, 20. Okay, so let's adjust it. How? We need to supply just a little configuration file which will configure this build pack for Elixir. Uh, and config, this is a convention. And what we are going to add it, so we're going to add the Erlang version. And let's set the Erlang version to whatever we use on development. And the Elixir version, as you might guess, it will be the latest uh, version that I use on the development. And so far, so good. And let's uh, actually add this configuration and push it to Heroku. So uh, add config for uh, for Erlang and Elixir versions. And git push Heroku master. And let's watch the output. Okay, it's uh, that's not something that I 
was expecting to do. Uh, let's revisit this Elixir build back. So the Erlang version probably uh, this might uh, break it down. Um, let's try it out one more time. So it was successfully pushed to Heroku, but we have already changed it. And and it push Heroku master, of course. Uh, let's uh Okay, so yeah, so I think that the additional spaces was uh, the root of the uh, problem. Uh, but yeah, uh, as you can see, I'm going to stop here. And we are using uh, the Erlang version 20 and uh, the Elixir version, the latest one, which is really awesome. We have the ability to configure it. Uh, it will go live, of course. Uh, everything goes smoothly with these new versions. Let's check it out. Uh, but bear with me, it will be okay at this point, and just a couple of seconds uh, before it finish. Compressing the details, let's actually navigate back and view the build pro progress from here. Again, uh, the version are as we supplied, of course. Okay, it was deployed. Open up. Right. And test, and test, submit. And it should go smoothly. Uh, bear with me. We'll check it out in a few seconds. Uh, but let's let me come back to my presentation. So uh, that was a demo of deploying the uh, Phoenix application to Heroku. And yeah, so for your life, you can check this uh, this uh, URI, right, and try to send it uh, some emails. So those emails will be happen on my account. Uh, all right, so that's about the demo. And of course, uh, this is not the end. It's just another start. What I mean by that is that I still uh, have a future goals for the next presentation. Probably someone uh, from you, from um, uh, those who are interested in, in Elixir and Phoenix, uh, will try to cover these topics. I think that the actor is the number one priority because it's a really huge topic and a lot, uh, a lot of can be um, presented here about the database wrapper for uh, Elixir and also deploying using other tools, for example, distillery or uh, EI delivery is also something that will be great to hear. Um, and also invoking the C extension using Elixir. And the latest topic that I found really interesting is about uh, communicating between Elixir and the Ruby, and also secure communication between Elixir and Ruby, which is something that is uh, really popular right now on the Elixir forums. So this is also some kind of topics that will be interesting to show. Uh, I will try to get one of these uh, uh, presentation ideas and also to prepare some future presentation based on these ideas. Uh, and this uh, pretty much it about uh, today's presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for being with me and correct me. And OK, so we have uh, delivery of the latest uh, message. And of course, I promised you to uh, leave the links. So here is the links to Elixir itself. Uh, Daily Trip is the uh, site that is uh, actually run by Josh Adams, which is which I found really great, and I have a subscription for that. Uh, also, there are some topics about Elixir. Nerves Project is the, uh, as I said before, this is um, 
the project, and NEVS is used to craft and deploy bulletproof uh, embedded software in Elixir. And deploying Elixir application with distillery is a great uh, topic on this East Fives. And of course, of course, there is a uh, long elixir with the pro elixir sieves, which is also uh, maintained by uh, Josh Adams. And uh, uh, everything that I have presented to you today is available here on this uh, URI deploying on Heroku. So it's also step-by-step -step instruction, starting from the initial of the repository, adding the uh, tool belts uh, and build packs uh, to the Heroku, and adding the static build pack for the branch, and everything else is also covered here. It is not officially available, I mean, like deployment of Heroku. There is no additional page how to deploy on Elixir, but don't worry. Everything is specified here, and as you can see, everything is working fine. And I hope today I was uh, able to convince you to try it out at least uh, deploying the Phoenix and Elixir application on the Heroku cloud. Uh, yeah, so I think that, thank you. If you have uh, any questions, I will be really happy to answer them right now. I'm not sure if uh, you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, Sergey, uh, I think um, guys uh, uh, would, I don't know, um, would contact you offline mm -hmm. if they have such permission from your side. Are you ready to answer offline? Of course, that, like this is the main idea to motivate and to have some practical use, because presentation might be boring, and I think that uh, no. uh, practical experience and uses more interest uh, yeah uh, practice is more interest for sure but uh, your presentation was was quite interesting was uh, quite you know, fruitful uh, thank you for your presentation thank you for doing it in English and uh, have a good day see you in two weeks everybody is okay Bye. Uh, sounds great. So, thank you very much for your attention and patience, and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye.